Welcome to Usability in Human Factors Decision Support Systems, a Human Factors Approach. This is Lecture D. In this lecture, we will discuss an important topic to usability in human factors, Decision Support Systems, DSS. A Human Factors Approach. Decision support systems have been used in a variety of industries, including finance, transportation, and public works since the 1970s. It had its beginnings in health since the late 1950s, but became a more active area of research and development in the mid-1970s. With the growing penetration of clinical information systems, DSS is an effective vehicle for providing real-time guidance to clinicians. DSS includes lower technology solutions such as paper-based guidelines. However, we will focus on computer-based clinical decision support systems, CDSS, and computerized provider order entry systems. In this lecture, we will explore some of the barriers to productive use and consider some options for improving design. The objectives for this unit, Decision Support Systems, a Human Factors Approach, Lecture D, R2, identify examples of usability barriers to adoption of clinical decision support. Medication alerts should not only warn prescribers about potential problems, but also provide enough information so they can be appropriately resolved. In a recent study, Russ and colleagues, 2009, observed medication prescribing during routine patient care and identified 15 barriers associated with medication alerts. The next two slides describe 11 such barriers. Some of the barriers have to do with interface issues, such as problems associated with the display of an alert. An alert may not provide adequate information as to why it was triggered. Some alerts may not be evidence-based or do not provide a reference to the evidence. Decisions often involve trade-offs, and some alerts fail to specify the relative risk of patient harm. Alerts can be repeated over the course of an interaction, and clinicians invariably become annoyed by such system behavior. If alerts appear too frequently, they can lead to information overload and prescriber desensitization, thereby increasing the potential for missing key alerts. One complaint about alerting systems is the failure to distinguish between serious problems and less harmful ones. For example, the difference between a genuine allergy and drug sensitivity is often clinically important in making medication choices. Allergies can be very serious, whereas sensitivities are not typically serious. Decision support systems may seem non-intuitive and even perplexing to the user. Alerts may sometimes cause the duplication of work that has already been done or will be done as a matter of course. Alert systems may not adequately reveal their capabilities, limitations, to the prescriber. Therefore, the full functionality of the alert system becomes ambiguous. This can increase the level of distrust and perhaps lead to anti-automation bias. In the system evaluated by Russ and colleagues, they found that poor screen display was evidenced by poorly presented alert text. The haphazard grouping of multiple alerts in a single pop-up window and the need for scrolling to see a series of alerts. Inadequate alert specification occurred when alerts did not show all clinically relevant information needed for decision making. We already talked about the unclear level of risk for a given alert and whether it overrides other factors that were part of the original decision strategy. For example, should a clinician discontinue an effective medication because the patient shows evidence of drug sensitivity. That is clearly a difficult decision to make. Ash and colleagues investigated unintended consequences of clinical decision support systems and found several problems related to presentation of data on the screen. One issue was that the systems were rigid or inflexible, requiring input and in a specific format, or could not be displayed in a certain sort order. Alert fatigue is a term commonly used for too many alerts, and Ash et al. found that this occurred more often than any other aspect of clinical decision support systems. 
We will now briefly consider two important constructs used in human factors in decision-making research, situation awareness and mental workload. Clinical decision support systems variably support situation awareness and impose varying levels of mental workload. It has been well established in human factors research that poor situation awareness and high mental workload can impair memory, problem identification, and decision making. Situation awareness is a construct used in contemporary decision research to characterize an awareness of what is happening around you with an understanding of what that means to you now and in the future. Situation awareness is a product of expertise and experience. Poor situation awareness can lead to impaired decision making. Situation awareness can be characterized according to three levels, perception of elements in the environment, cues stimuli from patient pulse, color, weight change, chart, EHR, nurse, Comprehension of the meaning of those elements by integrating the disparate pieces of information and determining what is salient. And projection of future status so that decisions can be made. As information management problems increase, mental workload increases. Time pressure makes it more important that clinical decision support automation be easy to use and useful. When you are under time pressure, you have less time and patience to navigate through poorly designed technology. Under time pressure, humans can adapt and still perform reasonably well by exerting more mental effort or by concentrating harder. However, under more significant mental workload, individuals can no longer adapt or compensate in order to maintain cognitive performance. Every human has a threshold where decision-making becomes impaired because of impossibly high mental workload conditions. Demands imposed by the system, e.g. clinician needing to remember the important facts of the most recent patient visit while starting the next patient's visit, can readily exceed the attentional resources or mental capacity of the person. This condition is ripe for medical error and compromises patient safety. We know ways to build a better machine and to make it usable by clinicians. Kajui and Jaspers offer some design recommendations. Interfaces must explicitly map to workflow patterns of clinicians. CDSS systems must support, rather than impede, clinical workflows through speedy, available, and usable algorithms that provide parsimonious, clear, concise, and actionable warnings and advice. There should be clues or cues in the interface to optimally support users in medication ordering. They recommend that a clinician should not have to negotiate more than three screens to respond to an alert. They also characterize the ways in which the display can be better organized and the alert displayed more prominently on the screen. Karsh also proposes a set of general guidelines to improve clinical information systems and the use of CDSS by designing for better workflow. Clinical systems should help clinicians see the right amount of the right type of data wherever and whenever needed. It is often tricky to determine the right amount. If too much information is available on a given screen or display, it leads to clutter and confusion in finding important information. On the other hand, the alternative is to have the user negotiate additional layers of screens to find the information they need. Clinical information should be accessible in the shortest possible amount of time. A common problem is that the information may be spread across several clinical information systems, making it difficult to find the right information. Data from disparate sources should be aggregated for completeness so that clinicians are not forced to go to multiple different systems to obtain important information. Horsky et al. provide several summaries of good design principles for aspects of clinical decision support systems. For alerts and reminders, they recommend tiered severity levels. Synchronous interruptive alerts should be reserved only for high severity warnings of two to three levels. Concise text justification. Content should be limited to one to two lines with a justification separated by white space. 
clear response options, buttons such as order or cancel with simple labels, action links to additional options, alternatives. Concurrent alert priority. Multiple alerts for a single order should be prioritized, de-emphasizing low severity alerts. Unobtrusive reminders may be designed as a flag in names lists, prioritized and color-coded messages in reserved screen areas. Meaningful color sets. Five to six colors to maintain emphasis effect. Matched across all systems, use color shades for gradients. Text luminosity. Dark text on light background and high contrast ratio aid reading. Match appropriate color pairs. Filtering rules. Increase specificity by evaluating more EHR data and trigger rules and suppress false positives. Curate, revise trigger rules. Periodic reviews of frequently overridden alerts by a committee that includes pharmacists. Prompt for EHR edits. Include a link to edit allergy and medication lists in alerts that are frequently overridden. This concludes Lecture D of Unit 7, Decision Support Systems, A Human Factors Approach. To summarize, one study identified 15 barriers associated with medication alerts. Clinical decision support systems variably support situation awareness and impose varying levels of mental workload. Design recommendation can help build a better machine and make it usable by clinicians. This concludes the unit, Decision Support Systems, A Human Factors Approach. Computer-based decision support systems offer great promise for the reduction of errors in medicine and facilitation of superior patient care. However, at this point in time, results on CDSS efficacy have been equivocal. CDSS can lead to new types of errors which present something of a daunting but not insurmountable problem. Adherence to usability human factors principles can lead to superior design and enhanced performance.